This is Hard Rocker Highlights as we review another Hard Rocker victory. This is Tom Rudebush along with head coach of the Hard Rockers Dan Kratzer and our color commentator on the Hills 97.5 and former uh, great receiver for the Hard Rockers Ryan Cadwalder. And Dan, congratulations on a 31-7 win over Jamestown. You're now 4-0 in the conference, 5-1 overall, 15th rated in this week's NAIA poll. Life as a Hard Rocker is good right now. Life is good. You know, we, we talk to the kids about having fun playing, and they all seem to have a lot more fun when you win. <laughs> and, so, and it's the kind of same way with coaching, you know. Uh, it's, it just seems a lot more uh, fun and rewarding when you come out on top. But uh, our kids have been playing exceptional football and, and working hard and getting better, and, and uh, those are the two, two qualities that, that you need in order to be a strong program. Dan, tell us the difference. The first half, you kicked a field goal with a second left to take a 10-7 lead into the locker room. Second half, you held them to uh, one first down. They had minus 12 yards rushing. What did you see in your team? What was the difference between the first half and the second half uh, when you outscored them 21 to nothing? Well, you know, when you've never been uh, in a position we're in before, uh, there are a lot of little question marks that float around in your mind, you know. Uh, when, when should you throw the ball? When, you sh when should you uh, run the ball? When should you blitz? When should you not blitz? Uh, and it's, it's taken us a while to get to the point where we're confident in what we're doing. You know, it, it was four years ago, it was a lot different calling plays than it is now. You know, you struggled. I mean, you just, you called everything, everything you called, nothing, nothing worked. <laughs> and now you've got a chance that maybe three out of four of them are going to work. So, uh, but one of the, one of the big differences and one of the big factors uh, in, in second half play with us uh, is, is beyond the schematics, it's, uh, it's conditioning. And we do, uh, and, and, and I think this year we've done a better job than ever before in, uh, keeping our strength program going two days a week in the season, keeping our conditioning circuit going two days a week in the season. Uh, our kids are in shape. So the second half of a ball game, uh, I, I don't see anybody that's kept up with us uh, in, the, in that second half where you know we've gone after them and, and been more aggressive. Uh, and again, a lot of it is just uh, our mental and physical conditioning. Yeah, Coach, it looks like you know your coaching staff isn't doing a lot of changes at halftime. You're just kind of reinforcing what's going on and that, that wear and tear and, and you know basically just the flow of the game seems to be wearing on the opposing defenses and offenses. Well, I think so. And then, you know, once, once you stop, uh, you know, from a defensive standpoint, once you stop an offense and you get three and out or you, you get a, a sack or a, a tackle behind the line of scrimmage, uh, that confidence, it's a great confidence builder for our defense and that's, that's what's happened and uh, you know our, our matchups are getting uh, better and better each week uh, just because of the quickness in our defensive line and then you know on the offensive side of the ball again those offensive linemen have, have really worked hard at conditioning themselves and, and you know one of, the, one of the things too in the second half of this last ball game was uh, uh, right previous to the to uh, halftime, uh, making that three points. You know, uh, there's pretty, you know, I thought Coach Derringer and, and the, the quarterbacks did a great job of, of some clock management and got back down there and got in position to, to go ahead. And, you know, it's, it's easier going in the locker room, you know, had three points than tied up or, or behind seven or 14, whatever might, might happen. But uh, um, uh, again, I, th I think uh, the conditioning factor, and, and you know, it's as much mental too, but uh, the physical conditioning factor is, is a, a really a plus for this football team. And you were talking about play calling and how it's uh, changed over the last four years. Tell us and tell us about a little bit about the art of play calling. You know, everybody sits in their living room on Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon and, and thinks that they could, oh, that was the wrong call, I would have run or I would have passed, and of course that's always after the play fails. But talk a little bit about play calling, uh, how it's done at, uh, at, uh, with the Hard Rockers, and uh, uh, a little bit about how you have evolved your play calling, as you said, over the last four years. Well, you know, on both sides of the football, you know, uh, calling the right defense and calling the right offensive play is, is essential. Um, 
you know, it's we sit down and script a lot of our plays. So we we know the first 20, 25, 30 plays that we're going to play and and basically what what we try to do is just make sure the kids are confident in what they're doing. Uh, because of all the film, I mean, you know, we've got you know, game tapes everybody we play now and so you have a good idea of what you're going to see on first down against our Roy formation. We have a good idea on second down what we're going to see against uh, Ricky formation. So we really base our play calling on what we anticipate seeing from a formation standpoint. So uh, all, our, all our things are, are based on what we've seen previously and now, you know, the key is uh, how, do you, how do you make adjustments? Well. Uh, you know, we have an inside power play, and we've been really trying to get something that will uh, not only enhance the running of that play, but if they start, if they start stopping that play, if they start stymieing what we're doing up front, then we have to have an answer. We have to have a, a better play, whether we run it off tackle now instead of between the guard and tackle. Uh, whether we, we do a, a cross block between the guard and tackle or tackle and guard or tight end and tackle. Uh, these are all uh, things that we look at. And it, it seems to evolve uh, a little bit as the season goes on. And uh, so if we see something unusual that we haven't prepared for, that's when you really have to uh, get into the playbook and say, okay, you know, where do we go from here? We've, you know, we've got to pull something out. But we have a sequence and, you know, we, we got uh, these kind of strategies. Uh, Pre-game preparation strategies are as, are as important uh, to play calling as, as some of the game strategies because sometimes you get a little bit too excited and emotional during the game and you can't think straight. So, uh, you know, if we have a third and short, well, we're going to have three or four plays that we can go to that are on our script that we'll look at and say, okay, we, you know, hey, we did this last time and we made four yards and we needed two, let's go back to it. You know, or if it didn't work, we'll go to the next one on the sequence. So, you know, and, and uh, one of the things that, that I've really kind of enjoyed this year, having to stay out of the, the wind and out of uh, contact area uh, and going upstairs in a press box, it gives me an opportunity to, to really see the secondary and really see what the alignments are. And uh, uh, Coach Derringer, uh, from an offensive standpoint, he gets that group together and, and you know get, goes over the board with them and just makes sure that he knows where the alignments are, you know, whether in a shade or whether in a three technique on the strong side or a five technique. And so as soon as he does that and, and we correspond, and then, and then we get back to, okay, here's what we should be doing or here's what we can do. And, Let's give it a try, but uh, you know it's a science, and uh, I, I don't know that we'll ever perfect it. But <laughs> we're trying to do the best we can. Yeah, it seems to me it got a lot easier perfecting it when you've got the receiver core that you do this year and the backs that you had this year. You know, we numbers don't lie. You're running a pretty even split between run and pass. Do you tend to favor one, or is it kind of just the way the game progresses? Well, you know, uh, being an old receiver. Man. I'd like to throw the ball nah, down. I'm you know, with you there, I, coach. I, I understand. <laughs> I can't. I can't get everybody to agree with me, except the quarterback yeah. and receivers. Yeah. But uh, um, you know, I've I've just always had a, a real strong interest in the passing game. It's you know, it's fun. It's exciting, and and there are a lot of things you can do with five different people. You know, and you put them in different spots, and uh, so uh, you know, I'm I'm a little bit biased toward uh, towards that. But you know, here, here's what happens. Uh, I, I like everybody else knows that you got to be able to run the ball too, right. and you know uh, having that complement just makes everything so much better. And you know I think our, our play action's been a little better this year too because of our run game. Yeah, Jamie Dale obviously had a rough uh, rough weekend, not as good as he has in the past. Anything on tape that you saw that might uh, might be able to simplify and, and change that, or is it just a good defense he was running up? Well, it was, it was a good defense, and again, like I said, we had we, we didn't have enough answers that we wanted to in certain situations, and we've uh, I think we've remedied that this week. We've sat down and, and really analyzed what we need to do. But the other thing was, you know, Jamie's had a bad ankle now for two weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, he's still not 100%. You know, I think he was probably about 80, 85% in this ballgame. But... Uh, 
you look at the fact that the guy scored two touchdowns, that's kind of what matters. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's important to get there, but it's more important when you're inside that 10 yard line that you yeah, get in and score. Drives, yeah. yeah. 10 sacks. Have you ever had a team get 10 <laughs> sacks defensively before? Uh, not that I recall. Um, there was a there was a team at Missouri Valley that played for a national championship, and I was assistant coach. At, uh, we had a, a rover back that uh, was about uh, five nine, about 175 pounds, and nobody could block. and And uh, he had four or five one ball game, but ten uh, from a group uh, is uh, just you know I, I don't want to say it's unheard of because we want that to be the norm. And that's the standard of, uh, of performance and the type of, of play that, w that we want to have and continue to have. And, you know, we'll give, a, we'll give an award for Player of the Week, and I'll give you an example of our Horseshoe Award. Uh, uh, Colton Jelton got one a few weeks ago uh, for a 41-yard punting average. And I just told him, and I told the team, I said, now, Colton, you'll never get another one unless it's over 41.2 yards per punt. So just that's that's what you got to do. You got to set the standard higher, and as the standard gets higher, uh, now that we've got ten in one game, uh, we've got a, we've got something to shoot for. And previous to this, you know, I mean, if you're shooting for two or three, that's not very good. Although most people would take that, right? But we want to set that standard of performance uh, as high as we can, and. Uh, you know, thank goodness we got a group of guys this year that are doing that. Give us a synopsis of Minot State and what what can we expect up there because that's going to be a two four and zero teams, and the one that wins is going to be tied for first. Well, uh, as you know, we've played Minot pretty well in the first half of the last couple of years, and uh, uh, since we're trying to strive and be a better second half ball club, and I think we're there. Uh, we need to keep this game close for a quarter and then we can just do what we can do to, to, to win it early. But um, we've got to be able to run the ball against them and if we can do that we'll have some success and then we've got to be able to stop the big plays. And uh, if we do those two things I think we can win this ball game. I think we match up with this team uh, better this year than we did last year. And uh, you know we, we're just we're anxious to get up there and we're anxious to, to play on a new field turf. So, you know, the uh, field conditions, no matter what the weather is, uh, we're going to have a nice field to play on, which is something in the past when you go up there you just you never knew. But uh, we've, you know, we've been fortunate enough over the last three years that the two times that other times that we've been up there, the weather has been relatively nice uh, this time in October. Well, we'll hope the weather continues nice up in Minot. Our coverage of Hard Rocker football up at Minot State begins at 12:10 this Saturday on the Hills 97.5, also KKLS AM 920, and you can see coverage on InsideDakotaSports.com. That's InsideDakotaSports.com, plus of course on the Hard Rocker website at GoRockers.com. Thank you for watching Hard Rocker highlights for Ryan Cadwalder. Dan Kratzer, this is Tom Rudebush. We'll have another edition next week.